Hey y'all, Erin here, and I am going to talk about something that I just experienced. I just moved for the fourth time in our nine years of marriage and the seventh time in the past 17 years, and I've just really been reflecting on it and thinking about it, and I wanted to share some of the things I've learned about, and this, this scripture has been on my heart as well, um, to, pushing me to share this. Is that a 2 Corinthians? It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can be comfort to those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. And I just felt like after going uh, through what I've been through, it's time for me to share some of the things I've learned. So I have my top 10 tips for moving or traveling or going on a long road trip with your little ones. I have three little ones. Timothy is seven, Evie is four, and Titus is two. So take what you will from what I'm about to say and modify it or adapt to your own situation. But the first tip I have is talk about it. So if you're gonna be moving, sometimes you know really far in advance and sometimes you don't know very long. But however long you know about it, uh, talk about it with your kids, that this is just part of something that your family is doing together. It's gonna, you're all together, you're in it, and you're gonna make the best of it and make an adventure of it. Number two, prep your things. Are you gonna fly or are you gonna drive? If you're gonna drive, are you taking one vehicle or two vehicles? Um, for our family, what we decided to do was we decided to drive and we decided to drive two vehicles. My husband drove his car, I drove mine, and then we shipped the third one. So that gave us time to prep the vehicles for travel across the United States. Number three, map out your trip. I've known lots of people who travel all around the United States, make this cool, grand trip adventure journey. I've known people that stop along the way and visit family. Some people make little vacations along the way. Now this was my third time going across the United States with three little ones, so I didn't want to linger. I wanted to get from point A to point B as soon as possible. So now we knew we were driving, now we knew we were taking two cars. Then next what I did is I took the mileage and I knew that we wanted to be in the car about six hours a day. Even six hours is a long day with little ones, trust me. So six hours was about our average I wanted to do. Then I, I took the mileage, mapped it out. Now we were traveling with our little dog, Penny, so we knew that we wanted to have pet friendly hotels along the way. So we almost stayed exclusively at La Quinta's across the United States. So shout out to La Quinta's for being pet friendly. That actually made it a little bit easier for us because when I was looking at the mileage about the how approximately how long it was gonna take, I could kind of look up a La Quinta along the way and see where it would be. That helped us in our planning process and um, mentally how far we were gonna drive and where our landmarks were gonna be. The next thing I wanna talk about, number four, is have special things in the car for your little ones. Now my oldest, Timothy, is seven. So he pretty much packed his whole special things bag himself. He has books and notebooks and activity things and some toys, colored pencils, all sorts of stuff back there. So this was Timothy's special bag. Timothy is also our Lego guy. So I got this, this is a Dollar Tree find. He's my Lego guy. They have actually their own set of Legos there. But I got this, he actually has two of these boxes in the van. Um, I'm not sure how much I spent on them, but it was well worth the money because this was a dollar and then the little pieces in there were a dollar. He's got two of them. And these are just for the van. They have something you can build on and then he can just, you know, build up. He, he very creative. So he just spent every day playing with his Legos back there. This was a huge hit. If you have a Lego fan, I highly recommend Dollar Tree for having a Lego set just for the vehicle. Next, um, everyone, I would ask people what they recommended for the van and, or the car ride. And over and over, people recommended audiobooks because I can't read in the car. And so I got a recommend, recommendation for um, the Dragon Rider. And I did not know how big this book was, but this actually was perfect because we listened to this book on um, audio all the way across the United States. Timothy was interested. 
Evie even had a favorite character, and I think Titus was even listening too. So um, this book was great, but I just recommend also audiobooks in general. So speaking of audio, I had trouble finding radio stations in the car. And so I know it's 2022, but we still did a lot of CDs. So we had like a lot of BBS soundtracks. We had um, Monumental, which we did this summer. Also had um, Roar the year before, a couple years back, we had that CD. Um, Destination Dig, this was Evie's CD from uh, her preschool last year, Sing for Joy. Um, this was uh, The Tales of Peter Rabbit and Jemima Puddle Duck on CD, was really good. And I didn't have this one, but you can bet I will sure have this now. I definitely 100% recommend this CD. Uh, this CD is Steve Green, Hide It In Your Heart. If you have a little ones, two, four, seven, anywhere around that age or up, because my husband and I now sing these songs because it's, it's scripture to music and it is amazing. I love it. So um, another thing Timothy had was he had a license plate game that he enjoyed uh, looking out the window and finding different license plates along the way. So that's what we had for Timothy, my oldest. For Evie, I had got the, the basket from Dollar Tree and I had it full of different books to look at, activity books, coloring books, sticker books, all the things. Um, like this little computer that she played with, this was her favorite stuffy she got for her birthday. And just a few like little toys that she could play with in the car. Um, Titus is two, he had his own basket. And probably he was the one who struggled the most in the car because sitting in the car is hard enough anyway, being too strapped in that long, you can imagine. But he had a little computer, um, this little activity book and a puzzle, and then I have tons of books. So the key for him was just keep passing different things back. He'd play with it for a while, get bored. I'd pass something else back, just keeping him entertained as much as we could until we got to our next stop. Yeah, and the other thing I wanna talk about is their water. So I always kept their water bottles with them so they could never be like, oh, I'm thirsty. They always had water and we'd fill it up at our stops and the hotel the night before. The next thing I wanna talk about is a special present along the way. So um, when we were at one of our last stops, we went to the restroom I took the kids to the restroom and I saw something out of the corner of my eye. So I came out, I whispered to my husband, I said, okay, when you go inside, I want you to pick out a little unicorn for Evie and I want you to pick out a car for Timothy and Titus. And cause they were not expecting this. They didn't ask for it. They, it was just a complete surprise. And so when my husband went into the gas station and he came out, we told them to close their eyes and hold out their hands. And then they all got a little, um, surprise and so this was Evie's loves it she plays with it almost every day still sleeps with it and everything so she's definitely got a unicorn theme going on right now but it was about five ish dollars and let me tell you what that was 100% worth it because the rest the home stretch the last part of the journey they were just so happy because they had an unexpected little gift and it just made the last part of the trip so much more pleasant. So I recommend something like that, a nice little surprise near the end or even halfway just to keep the spirits up. So speaking of presents, the next thing I wanna talk about is a special welcome home present. That's kind of what we called it. So um, Timothy, my Lego guy, we were talking with him about, okay, when we get to our new house, you can go to Target and you can pick out a new Lego set. That's gonna be so special to build in your new bedroom, your first Lego set in your new bedroom. He loved it. And then for Evie, she got a Princess Tiana dress that she had been, we were talking about the whole way. Okay, when we get to our new house, you're gonna get a new Princess Tiana dress. So she was so excited about that. And then Titus got a water table to play out on the back deck. And we moved in July and it was scorching hot. So that was great, the water fun on the back. Uh, I know that might not always be possible, but if you can do it, boy, it does, it makes a difference, that excitement of a welcome home gift. The next thing I wanna talk about is unpack right away. And this might be like a surprise. Why would you even put that on the list? But I don't think I've done this in the past. This is the first time we've really um, hustled as hard as we did to unpack right away like we did. So my mother-in-law, Bavulia, um, my uh, husband's mom, came out 
for a week and like we just were so focused. This room, this room, that room, you watch the kids and just the hustling, just sweating the whole time. Um, but it truly does make a difference. That's why people, other people have said unpack right away. When you unpack things and you see the things that are familiar to you, it does start to make your new place feel like home. Um, the first week we were about 70% unpacked and now we've lived here for about two and a half months. We're about 90, 95% unpacked and we just do, we feel settled here. It, it each day feels more and more like home. We're getting into our rhythms and routines and it, it does make a difference to unpack right away. Just for a little comparison, the last move when we moved to California, um, I remember it took us about four months until we were about even at that 70% unpacked mark. So it, um, now I can say for sure, unpack your stuff right away. It does make a difference. All right, the next thing I have, number seven, is to um, start looking up churches right away. Start looking up and seeing places where you can start um, belonging in that community, that fellowship with like-minded believers that's gonna pray for you and you can worship and um, get just plugged in really well into the community. So I would recommend look up churches and get plugged in right away. It does make a difference. Number eight, look up activities. This was, um, I'm still kind of working through this, but deciding uh, what activities you wanna get involved in. How many activities do you want to do? Um, we kind of ended up settling on just one activity for now. Uh, we decided to do a wana for the kiddos. So they, uh, Timothy is a Sparky, Evie is a Cubby, and Titus is a Puggle, the cutest little Puggle you ever saw. And then I do a Bible study on Thursday morning. So. As of right now, those are our two activities, and I'm pretty happy with that, and then we may do one or two more, so we'll see. But having um, activities does help you start feeling connected into the community and your, where your new home is. All right, the next thing is, number nine, is this book. And if you have followed my channel all, you know I love to talk about books. Um, this one I really recommend. This is called After the Boxes Are Unpacked. And she has written it for anyone moving, but for my military mamas, oh, I so recommend this book because um, she breaks up into like three parts. So the, you know, like all these different things you're going through, the different stresses, the things you have to remember, um, the moving part, and then getting planted and blooming where you are. So it's just such a great topic, great, way she, she writes about it and talks about it, uh, full of scriptural wisdom and full of just practical advice, um, things to help you feel settled and things to remember, you know, even like uh, self-care and soul care. Um, your circumstances change constantly, uh, but your identity, your identity should always be first centered on who you are as a child of God. So. I highly recommend that book because it's gonna be so helpful to you. Remembering that you're not alone, lots of people go through this, and also it's just a stage. It may be hard now, but you'll get through it and it'll start feeling better. Just real quick, I remember um, maybe it was about two weeks after we'd been living here, and I was laying in bed, and I just remember feeling like, oh, like I could feel the stress hormones start to, feel not as intense because it, it it takes a while to kind of unwind and relax because you're just go, 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 go for so long. But yes, it is just a stage and it will get better. And then last, number 10, grace upon grace upon grace. You know, you're going through so much stuff and stress yourself, your husband is, your spouse, your kids is stressful for them. So have grace with yourself, have grace with them. If someone's in a bad mood, just love on them and, and give them that grace that you wish that you could have too. Just remember, it's only a stage, it will get better. So I hope this was encouraging to you. I hope that um, you have a few little tips and tricks for your next move to make it go smooth. And um, thanks for watching, I'll talk to you later, bye.